that. Jerome, if you want to start rolling. Um, so I have 604. I'd like to call the uh, July 13th, 2021 regular governing board meeting of CV Fiber to order. Um, thanks for everybody for, um, for that have showed up here and that have, uh, are attending remotely. This is, uh, this is a bit awkward, but thankfully there was this amazing, gigantic television monitor um, that I'm using with my laptop, and I'm hoping that that's going to work. So we have Orca here physically, and we have Orca in the meeting as well. Um, oops, I forgot one step. I have to start the... Actually, no, I, I don't have to start the recording because Orca's recording. Okay. You're going to get a slow neck. Yeah, probably. So I'm going to keep. I'm going to look at you, and then I'll look down at my agenda back and forth. So um, if, if I look weird, that's that's what I'm doing. Okay. Are there any are there any additions or changes to the agenda? <coughs> okay. Hearing none. Let's move along. A uh, public comment. Any commentary from folks about items that are not on the agenda? Okay. Hearing none. Um, I move that we approve the consent agenda, which includes the approval of the minutes from June 8th, June 10th, and July 6th. Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan. Any further discussion? If Alan's okay with it, I'm okay with it. All right. Okay, so Alan's okay with it, so I will declare that unanimous under Alan's dictatorial decree. Please don't let the minutes reflect that, Christian. <laughs> Just a turn of phrase. Okay. Speaking of minutes, do we have somebody who's taking minutes? Yes, Christian from CBRPC is here. Thank you, Christian. Uh, clerk's report. I believe uh, Jeremy sent a sent a report. Oops. If I can find it. He said he didn't have anything to report except that those minutes were there. Oh well, that makes things rather a lot easier. Um, does anybody have any sort of clerk-related questions that they would like to that they would like to ask or have resolved? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that as a no. Um, hold, on, hold on one second. I'm having a bit of a network lag from. Google, hold on. You have Starlink? No, this is um, this is Google do doing it because we're on the Berlin Elementary connection right now. I'm just having um, having issues with Gmail. So it wouldn't be a CV Fiber meeting without internet trouble. That's true. Anybody else having internet trouble <laughs> that they want to talk about while I'm? <laughs> oh, well, we had our regular uh, Waitsfields uh, Champlain Valley Telecom and Wild Cable and, and not as fast up as I'd like to see. It's way more stable than that Starlink. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. had our, our semi-annual outage de degradation and I got a technician who actually did talk down to me from CCI and gave me his name so I could text him next time I put in a ticket. Um, and he, he actually told me, yeah, I had to replace some plugs, which they never admit, so. Well, that's cool. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. I got uh, an upgrade from validated communications. I, I, I've now got eight, eight megs. Wow. Oh. A, that's like a special down. That's like getting up from your crawling position and starting walking, right? You're... All right. So, um, yeah. So that's, I, as, that's as good as I've ever gotten. There you go. Well, hopefully, we'll, hopefully, we'll sort that out before too long. Uh, all right. Uh, financial report. Ray, did you want to uh, present that? Well, I'd, uh, I'd defer to Phil if he's prepared. Otherwise, I will. Oh, okay. Sure, sure I, I can present it. It's, um, I believe it was sent, ar it was sent around. Uh, the current bank balance is just under uh, $70,000 at 69520 That includes $25, $25, excuse me, $25 in savings and $69,495 in checking. Uh, we do have a few invoices due, uh, three of them. Um, 
for uh, some administrative services, legal services, and advertising that total uh, $1,111 altogether. Uh, there have been no checks cut since the last time we've met. Um, so there's been no change to the, the financial reports. And there's been no cash in since the last time we've met. Any questions? I have a, a quick comment and, and, and an apology. Um, yeah, I, I, I have some checks to cut. So there are some outstanding bills to pay that uh, because I'm the holder of the checking account that's actually authorized to write the checks. I, I need to get on get on that and do that. Um, there is also a I think I got yesterday a um, another bill from uh, Primer Piper Eggleston for some other work that they did <coughs> since the last bill that we got. So we can add that to the uh, we can add that to our. Um, list of checks to go out, but that, that should be approved by the executive committee before I write that check. So we'll do that quite soon. All right, any other, any other questions for, for Phil or any financial related concerns? Okay, moving right along. Uh, product manager's report, Jerry. I can aim, so actually you're in, no, you're in the shot. Where am I? I'm up there You're somewhere. up in the top okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we, we're on the cusp of some action here. We, uh, one of the most important things that happened recently is that we got information from the Public Service Department on what they require in order to execute the grants that we've already been awarded because they've been moving the goalposts a bit. Uh, very even uncertain of the field we were playing on, let alone moving the goalposts. So now we have better information and we can, uh, we can. Uh, can you get closer to the mic? Oh, Here. sure. My mic. Which mic? Here, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna mute mine, and Tom, you can turn yours back on. Oh, there we go. <coughs> okay, shall I do that again for you, David? You're good. No, can you, you hear me? No, you're on. You're muted again, Tom. You're still muted, Tom. <coughs> How about that? Are we good now? That? We good now? Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. So, so let me do that again. Do that We're, again. We're, okay, now yeah. I have uh, feedback going there, on. I, Go I turned the audio Thank off on you. That. We are on the cusp of moving forward here with our grants. PSD has notified us of what we think are the, finally the final set of requirements that they require in order to execute the grants that we've already been awarded. So we're, we're working on that with, there's, uh, we're, with a small group of us are having a, a meeting uh, tomorrow, I believe, to coordinate moving forward on that so that we can get, uh, get these grants executed. We, have, we're, we are ready to give a notice to proceed on the poll inventory. And we've already, uh, David, has, David Healy has already provided to uh, one of the contractors some of the information that we're holding so that they can set up their system and, and prepare to move, uh, move forward with that. We, uh, for, the, for the high level design, we have a, uh, uh, a letter, a draft letter that's been, that's been uh, going around the executive committee, getting that ready to uh, go out to the select boards, asking them for information on any properties that they might be able to lease to us that we could use either for hubs or cabinets or, or whatever services might be available. So that, that's getting ready to go out the door. Uh, the other piece of information that's uh, part of the action that's going on right now is that we've been having weekly coordination meetings with WEC, which is, which is a very good thing. We've been meeting with a, with a small team over at WEC, and it's, it's been invaluable just to spend 45 minutes in the room with them uh, talking over how we're going to move forward uh, in our coordination, uh, in our use of WEC poles in area A, B, and C. So this is this is really important uh, time. It's time well spent that we're doing with WEC. Um, I think that's all that I have to report right now. But if anybody has a question, I can I can step up with something. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, uh, Mike, I heard you say you're having weekly coordination meetings, but you cut out, uh, at least on my end, uh, with who? With WEC. With WEC. With WEC, thank you. Washington, Washington Electric Talk. 
Sorry, my Sorry, accent my gets in the way. In the way. Any other questions for Jerry? Yeah. The, the, the second question, uh, what the nature of the initial uh, information that the PSP uh, is requesting, uh, a low line just easily gotten, no big deal? It's easily gotten, no big deal, but it needs to thread a very specific set of needles. Um, and, and it's also also going to require, and we're gonna, we'll talk about this later on, it's going to require some detailed grant administration work uh, that, that will need to be done and some proof of you know, ability to do that kind of high detail grant information work. But it, it's, it's nothing that we can't be able to do. Uh, it's, so I, I don't see any problems fulfilling what they're requesting. Anything else for Jerry? Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Um, anything else that you have that you think we need to know? No, I think we're good for right now. Okay, cool. All right, um, moving along. Waterbury's application to join CV Fiber. This was uh, surprising, and the only reason it is on the agenda is because I had a Google alert set up for CV Fiber which if you don't know, a Google alert will periodically you know, search for terms or whatever and just send you an email when new items appear with those search terms. It's a great way to get news items and rather than having to like, you know, trawl through news sites and such. So I had an item, so I checked CB Fiber on Friday, I think it was, Saturday, and it said, <clears throat> Waterbury was a member of CB Fiber and was looking for delegates to go serve on the CB Fiber board. And I was thinking, huh, that sounds interesting and probably something that I should have known about. Um, so I went back and I dug through minutes in Waterbury and they approved this at, I believe it was their April 12th meeting. They, so they, the select board unanimously uh, approved, you know, the application to join CB Fiber and at no point did anyone communicate that to anyone here. So if somebody else heard about it, that's, I mean, maybe that was my ball or somebody's ball drop, but. So I, I don't know that it's a, it's a terribly hard decision to make. Um, it's sort of unfortunate that we didn't get to include them in some of our strategic planning so that we'll necessarily be um, thinking of them a bit later in the process. But um, the reality there is that they are extensively cabled. David, what was the figure? They're like 90% at 25.3 or better, something like that. Yep. So um, we probably wouldn't, wouldn't have been stampeding towards them anyways, but I think there are some areas that, um, incidental to um, Duxbury in particular, I think maybe, um, maybe some possibilities when we're doing those um, on Moortown, I suppose. Um, there will be some some addresses that we'll be able to get as part of the other um, part of the other towns. Yeah, Ken. Yeah, as a part of some of my real estate work, there's also parts of town in um, towards Waterbury Center, maybe in Waterbury Center, and there's a challenge there that they all have buried utilities. So I, we're going to have to figure out what that means for us. Well, yeah, if we were ever to to try to serve. You know Waterbury Center there I mean they only just did all that utility work and dug up the roads and ran all that stuff this is a year and a half ago and the reason I know that is because I'm the first time I met with Waterbury folks in Waterbury actually in Duxbury folks too um, they were digging up the roads and I said well hold on you know while you're digging up the roads can you quick just add some conduit for fiber we can do this down the road if necessary and they said yeah no that's already it's already gone to the the general contractor and they've already you know bought all this stuff so we were a bit late so no I mean that's every, everything downtown is gonna be underground just like parts of Barry and Mont, Barry City and Montpelier um, and parts of Berlin too to be fair um, so I think we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there to, but those are going to be the more some of the more dense areas so rather expensive we'll have to uh, you know see how we can fit those in later on any other thoughts on um, yeah, RD. RD, go ahead. 
is frozen. Sorry, right, were you recognizing me? I you froze there for me. Yeah. Um, is am I? Do I understand that Waterbury is already a part of the district? Okay. They, they thought they were. So we admitted them in April. We did not. No, they they thought they they thought they could just vote and that they were part of it, but be, so, because they didn't tell us anything that this had happened, we will formally accept them as of today if everybody is amenable to that. Okay, so I, I didn't know if, if Artie had anything to say. He's on quite a bit of a delay, but well, um, uh, 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 go ahead. Uh, unless I'm missing something, we haven't included Waterbury in any of our plans and schedules. Yeah, that is a that's a true statement. The we will is, have is we, that correct? That's correct. We'll have to back them in and figure out how to include them um, in in a later phase. I mean, but they're yeah, they're not part of any of our initial um, our initial schedule. So we will have if if we decide to add them. We will have to think about how they um, how they well, fit into our build plan. Uh, if if I may, I my concern is that um, in backing them in, we don't back Cabot out. No, there's there's basically by which I I I mean that I I hope that. Sorry, I, I hope that the um, the acknowledgement of Waterbury's membership in the district doesn't mean a delay in the the uh, um, in, in FTTP Cabot's expectation. I mean, um, we're pretty much on the fringe as as it is, and I'm um, I'm I'm concerned that you know that. that adjustments of the schedule might be um, to our disadvantage. So um, that is yet to be determined to be completely straightforward, but that's basically impossible because Waterbury, Waterbury doesn't have that many places that we would be targeting in the first place. So I would say that the likelihood that Cabot would be would get bumped in, uh, in to get uh, Waterbury addresses, I mean, to, as far as I'm concerned, is basically zero. Um, so it's hard for me to, to do the back and forth with the almost four second delay between between you and me, RD. But um, happy to have any other questions if it, if you have them. Um, I have Alan, Ray, and Ken. Yeah. Yeah. So. Jeremy, in, in, in the original uh, note you sent around, the email you sent around, you reported that um, M. Bard made a motion to join CV Fiber as an interested party. Do you know what that language, an interested party, was that purposeful on the part of Waterbury? That was that was a I, I think that was a, a misquote in their minutes. It was to exp, it was to express their interest to us that they wanted to join. The word interest should not have been as an interested party. That was just a, a sloppy a sloppy note taking. So by all accounts, by their their officials and so have we Go ahead. Have we in fact had an official request from them? to join CV Fiber? Have, have, have we received paperwork saying, here, here is the motion made and approved by the select board? Um, no, no, but they're, ad, they're advertising in local newspapers asking for CV Fiber delegates. So they, somebody skipped a step. It is definitely 100% in their minutes, but no, they did not do that the affirmative step of reaching out to me or anyone for that matter and saying, this is, this is what we want. Well, it, it seems to me that it's, it's putting, putting the cart before the horse for us to take any action tonight on this until we receive a formal 
a formal application or a for, formal notice that they, uh, the town, town uh, select board has voted to join CV Fiber. I mean, we, we have nothing to act on except hearsay at this point. Well, hearsay and all of the official minutes, and I just posted something from their website specifically saying that we should, that they're, um, that they're joining CV Fiber. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear, um, I'm happy to you know, slow this down a bit, um, but I, I definitely want to hear from anybody else if they have any other thoughts. Uh, I've got Ray, Ken, Chuck, and uh, Ray, Ken, Chuck, Siobhan, and John. Ray, you're up. I wonder if I'm on a delay. No, you're not. Okay. Okay, Ray, can I go on to somebody else and come back to you? No, I'm typing what I want to say. Okay. So okay. My, my view of the world is to move to admit Guadalajara into the CV Fiber Communications Union District without conditions, subject to confirmation of their formal motion to join CV Fiber. Second. Okay. So a motion by Ray and a second by Siobhan. Um, let's go back to, uh, let's go to, Ken. so I have Ken, Chuck, Siobhan, and John. Motion yeah, on the my, table. Yeah, and, and my comment is is somewhat related. And, and Waterbury is going to join in the same way um, to, to a body that is members like Montpelier and Barry and Berlin. And we at some point, we need to be more something, more formal, more structured about what it means to be a member where your population is largely um, served at 25.3 or better. Um, I, I, and I'm not volunteering at this point, but I probably will in the fairly near future to begin a parallel set of discussions to identify what it will require for CV fiber to be actually begin action in those areas. And it gets to RD's point. I have no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm represent Montpelier and I have no expectation that CV Fiber is going to take any action and invest any money in Montpelier um, until um, the, our unserved and underserved areas are well on their way. We have the plan in place. But that said, I still represent Montpelier and folks represent Barry and Berlin. And if we bring in Waterbury, we need to have this. And, and, and it also is going to, for the areas, for the towns that have a, you know, a, a significant, but maybe not overwhelming proportion that are also served, we've got to have that plan, that planning process begun. Um, so in, in inviting Waterbury, and I'm not sure I actually agree with the motion. I'm not sure we accept them. I think we send communication to Waterbury telling them that we are prepared to accept them. Um, but again, the reason I'm bringing it up now is that there needs to be some of that communication. There needs to be clarity to them that they are not going to be immediately on the list to provide service to their unserved and underserved, well, to their served area. And we have to be very careful about their unserved and underserved area because it may be really challenging to provide them service. Okay. Thanks for that, Ken. And uh, Ray, I can answer your question quickly. Was there a requirement that towns be a member by a certain date for some aspects of H360 purposes? So there was the date of June 1st. This was whether t uh, towns not in uh, communications union districts could be served by projects not spearheaded by CUDs. So if there was a, an existing uh, provider, Waterbury was not in a CUD as of June 1st, uh, consequently, well, if they join a CUD later, they could be covered by either of those provisions because they would be a member of a CUD or not before June 1st. Um, that was the only date constraint, uh, the date constraint um, that was in H360. So it doesn't, it doesn't make them ineligible for anything in particular. Uh, I've got Chuck, then Siobhan. My comment is on um, reviewing the statutes around admission of new members. Basically, we get to uh, determine any sort of terms and conditions, including financial obligations, uh, that we deem um, appropriate to allow their admission. Um, and so I do wonder if 
contrary to Ray's motion, uh, whether it would make sense for us to consider some conditions, whether financial or process or otherwise, uh, to admit them. Financial, may, to me, maybe doesn't feel that fair since, uh, you know, to Ken's point, we're probably not actually going to prioritize service anywhere there anytime soon. Then again, they have ARPA funds. Um, but on the flip side to that, maybe maybe there is some expectation setting of like, look, you're going to end up in one of the later tiers of, of our ability to deliver and we'll consider you when there are opportunities to go through Waterbury territory to reach underserved territories of, of other communities. Um, but in, in, you know, in, the, in the meantime, you know, the remainder of Waterbury will remain uh, near the end of the list. Okay. Um, thanks, Chuck. So I've got Siobhan, Tom, and then back to you, Ray. I just wanted to say we've talked about courting Waterbury for years. We've been asking them and we've given presentations to them and tried to get them to join for a long time. So we wanted them. And 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 um, so there's that. Uh, the the other thing is, I think our priorities and our the way we've been approaching our criteria for how we're trying to get maximum take rates and still serve our core underserved and unserved populations. I think we're approaching that really well, and I don't think Waterbury's inclusion changes that because. They, they just become part of the mix and their data is this and the other data is this. And because we've put in tons of work in what we consider our priorities, I don't think it's going to be just letting Waterbury in isn't going to change all of that in some significant way. I'm done. Thanks, Siobhan. Tom? Similar. Similar. Okay. You know, looking down the line, do we want Waterbury in our community? And the answer is yes. It's just a question of you know, what happens after that. Can we go on later? Much more I'm not hearing you very well, Tom. Uh, say that again, Ken. I'm not hearing that at all. Can you hear me better? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I was saying that I, 10 years down the line, I think we're going to want Waterbury in our district, as we have mentioned in several other places in the past. Um, and whether we, you know, wait for a while before letting them in or let them in now and then, um, you know, see about planning as planning develops, then I think it makes obviously a lot more sense to go with the latter there. Um, but to address Ken's concerns, um, actually, I think I think it's something better to, to bring up um, perhaps in a later section where we talk about going public. But I, I think there are other um, components here of how this might play out in the future and where we're going to end up laying line and when that um, probably aren't best discussed in this time right now. That's it. Thanks. I've got, um, so uh, we'll do Phil and then Ray. It, it's it's uh, Two, two items. First is um, what's the impact on um, our current planning? It seems like we've already at least put plans in place for poll inventories and high level design is is queuing up. Um, so I assume that somebody coming at this stage would certainly have an impact there. Um, and it does seem like it, if, if they want if they want to be part of it, it seems like we do this is like last minute to get them in to be under one cohesive plan and not sort of patched in at a later time. With that said, it seems it seems it is premature, and uh, we should even if we take their their request um, as is as if it was made to us. We want to make sure they understand what they're um, what they're signing on for, and make sure they understand our timeline before you know we get too far into it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Ray? Yeah, so several things. Um, <clears throat> Chuck is right with regard to the, the bit about conditions. One could apply conditions to anybody's entry. And um, my motion talked about without conditions specifically because of that. 
Uh, and, and I think it's meant for places that are joining perhaps in like EC Fiber where they already have a significant debt load and there may be an impact, right? Both on the, on the district as well as on the town. And so that's not inconsequential. Um, with regard to expectations, none of our 20, 20 towns have any idea what our plans are. They don't know if they're first or last or whatever. We've just not made that, you know, available to anybody. And so with regard to, you know, setting up their expectations, uh, Barry City doesn't know, Montpelier doesn't know, Berlin doesn't know, they don't know, period. We're about to reveal, I think, uh, hopefully area A, but uh, we haven't revealed anything else. And with regard to the plans, you know, this is kind of like, with regard to our plans, this is kind of like uh, making battle plans. And the thing about battle plans is, as soon as the first shots are fired, all those plans, you go out the window, right? And so as we're moving forward, trying to implement our plans, because of money and contracts and other kinds of things, um, we're, those things are not going to happen in the way we are currently envisioning them. I, I think Waterbury has some value to us. Well, one is they're getting about a million and a half in ARPA funds, so maybe there's a source of some money. Second, I think that they add some weight to our, our district, like Montpelier does, and Barry City and Berlin do. I think they add political weight to our our district. And so I'm for embracing them. And whether we do it tonight or we do it some other time, I'm, I am concerned about whether this June 1st thing is a, is a bit. And they perhaps in April, when they were seeing H360 roll out and seeing deadlines being imposed, perhaps they had some expectations that they're going to beat the deadline and not be left out of something. And so I'm a little bit concerned about uh, when, when this is effective. Um, but I'm willing to go either way, but uh, I, there is a motion on the floor and um, hopefully we'll see it uh, subject to the confirmation that there has been a formal motion and adoption by the, by the, uh, by Woodbury. Okay. So I, I think I, if I can tackle a couple of these sort of lingering remnants before we maybe go towards voting. So uh, April, April 4th, April 12th, whatever, whatever in April, that was the day that they voted to apply to join CV Fiber. That is not the date that they joined CV Fiber. They're not a member, member town just yet, so therefore they would not be held, they would not be under that um, provision of H360. I don't think that that, I don't think that loses them anything. Um, if anything else, you know, they're, they're benefiting because they could look at a project that's not a C, not a CUD project as long as it's providing universal access um, that connects underserved folks in Waterbury. Somebody else could still come in because they weren't part of the CUD at that date. I'm not sure that's a big that's that big of a deal. How, and so the question was, well, wait a minute. We don't have. And I forgot who asked it. I'm sorry. You know, we don't we don't have them built into any of our. Um, poll audits or high level design or detailed design, we don't have that grant money to do that work for Waterbury. However, like David said in the chat, they do. So if we know what the differential costs are for the poll audit and the high level design, I would say at a minimum, we can say, this is what it's gonna cost for us to start thinking about Waterbury as part of our strategic vision. I mean, otherwise we're gonna get to it later and it is gonna be a bolt on. And a bolt-on in terms of a network design is not is not going to look it's not going to look great. So we could if we can figure out what that cost is, and we come back to them and say, this is what it's going to take. Um, we can probably make it optional for them. Um, we just ask the select board. So I mean, I, so we could probably leave raise res, raise motion the same, admit them without any conditions, but then say if you want to be part of this. Um, if you wanna be part of the current kind of strategic planning, then you have to step up because we, we weren't expecting you. So like if, so if you're making a meal for 20 people and a 21st person shows up, hopefully they've brought some dishes to pass. I guess maybe that's the best way to put this. Yeah, at my house, I would have enough food for 35, but yeah, I, I take your point. So had we, had we applied to 
the PSD for grants that would include all of Washington County and unaffiliated unaffiliated towns contiguous to us that I could totally get behind that metaphor that like you know food for everybody but we're not we're, there's a lot of money coming our way but we're not quite that unconstrained and and remind me next time you're having dinner I'm, I'm coming up any any other thoughts on this how are folks feeling about the about the motion Phil um you contradicted yourself. You said, you know, accept the motions that stood without conditions. And then the next sentence, you added in conditions. Right? It, I, so it seems like those are conditions. No, so so I, I'm saying we, we admit them. They're in, period. Let's do that. And then we go back to them and say, there's two paths that Waterbury can take. They can, they can be part of our current strategic planning and join in the high-level design and it'd be in a better situation with the poll audit and everything that's happening imminently, but they're gonna to need to pony up the differential cost for that, that's one way. Or they don't pay and we get to them when we get to them and have a probably substandard design when it comes to bolting them on later. Tom? See if I can just talk us through yours. Yeah. Um, and it seems like there's, there's levels in between there where there's, um, they could be included in the high-level design, but not included in the construction until you know a later phase of development, um, where to, to kind of address some of RD's concerns about Cabot. Um, that is, you know, one of the options in there is, is yeah, we're going to include you in this design if you can, you know, bring your plate to the table. But um, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get served first. Okay, Alan. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really going to urge caution on this because, you know, we're dealing with issues of a municipality forming with the graces of the state. And it's not, it's not a light thing that we can just create rules and ways of doing things when there are requirements that it seems to me have not been met. I'm looking at 3082 admission of district members in the CUD statutes. And it says the legislative body of any non-member municipality which desires to be admitted to the district shall make application for admission to the board. Has that happened? I don't think so. I, I, you know, we don't want to three years from now be involved in some kind of laws, crazy lawsuit where somebody starts digging up the history of how Waterbury joined uh, CV Fiber and somebody finds out that we that the statutes really weren't followed and they weren't they were never really a proper member of the municipality so i think this is we should slow down on this not just for us but also for waterbury i i think waterbury hasn't done what it needs to do to be considered i don't think the issue is really ripe as it were for our deliberation and decision at this point and the, the provision at the end of Ray's motion, you, you don't feel like that satisfies that satisfies it, making this contingent on them properly applying? That's correct. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's proper. I don't think it's proper for us to take action on something that doesn't yet exist. I mean, the statute says they have to submit an application. They have to make application. It doesn't say oral. It doesn't say um doesn't say written it doesn't say on blue paper paper black paper but i think most people would assume that it means somebody from the from the in this case the select board would contact cv fiber and say we would like to be admitted and here's how the decision of waterbury was made to request that we be a member and there it seems like there just hasn't been any of that and i i think it puts in peril any action that we might take Thanks, Alan. Ken? Yeah, so I, I, with that note, I, I think I, I would vote against this. And, and, I'd, and after voting against it, put another motion to invite the, the town of Waterbury to submit an application to join CV Fiber. Okay. Any other thoughts? We've, we have some folks that we haven't heard from yet. Uh, Jerry, if you want to hear, you can speak. Tom, if you want to unmute him, I have to. Just follow up. Following up on what Ken just said, I know that we've spoken to them in the past, but it's been quite a while and we've gone quite a way. 
they might not understand how they would fit into the planning that we're moving forward with and we are moving forward with. They might not really know what they're signing up for necessarily. And I haven't noticed that they tend to get into our open public meetings to see how we operate and what we do. It may behoove them to do a little more homework and make sure they understand what they're moving into. That's it. So yeah, the, the the last time I had any interaction with folks in folks from Waterbury was there was Steve um, Lutzpike, their um, planning director, who was at the at a uh, RPC meeting uh, connected to Bolton. Remember, we were talking about Bolton back in March, I think it was. Bolton was talking about joining, and then I never heard from them again. Steve was there, and it wasn't long after that that he then um, after. Bonnie from CBRPC put out the email to all of the member towns and then they went and did this and unfortunately you know did not properly communicate this um, to us at that point. So Tim I saw you uh, showing your face there. You, do you have something you want to add? Um, I was going to join in. I've been listening uh, with the webcam off obviously uh, trying to cook dinner at the same time off an iPad here. So um, I uh, if it came to a vote, I probably would not vote to keep on having each community join in. Just, uh, you know, like I, Roxbury comes from when you started this way back three years ago. And had we had, um, you know, five towns, seven towns in the beginning, uh, I just always wonder, like, would we be there by now already versus having everybody join in and make, make such a, a monster of this uh, versus start it up and slowly add towns, much like somebody just recently mentioned, I think, Alan. Um, but uh, I, I wouldn't be voting in for this. Uh, it sounds like, uh, especially the way this was presented, um, Waterbury didn't come to you, correct, Jeremy? No, this was me finding, essentially finding a newspaper article that was reporting on it. Right. So... Um, my two cents is, is uh, you know, at some point, like, we got to uh, stop adding towns and just, you know, like this whole meeting is talking about Waterbury. We, we you know, we're, we're taking focus away from the driving force of getting up and going quicker. That's just my two cents. I know it's a simplistic view, but that's, that's just my uh, overall picture of it. Okay. Anything else? It looks like we are... Coming to the point where we're just about to vote. Um, uh, hi, this is David from uh, Duxbury. Um, I just, I'm curious, and maybe this isn't, maybe if we do consider it later, that would be like um, when they do a formal application, we could have further discussion. But I do wonder what the effect would be on the, um, the business model of, for CB Fiber. Like, I don't know of any businesses that are looking to limit their customer base. Um, and I think we need to consider, I think uh, Siobhan was saying, I think I agree with, with her perspective. We have our models and frameworks for how we prioritize and figure out where we lay fiber and connect customers first. Um, and I don't think we wanna three years from now be kicking ourselves for not admitting Waterbury when it's gonna be probably for the business model be more um, conducive to success. So those are my two cents. Thanks. So, so if I'm if I'm reading the room right, I mean, I, even if this motion goes down, I expect at some point rather soon we will admit Waterbury. Um, but I think the checkbox that we're checking here is a procedural one, and if it's if it's raising Alan's hackles, I'm going to take that quite seriously. Um, so let's let's call the question. I'm going to do a I'm going to do a roll call. Um, if I need to split a tie at the end, otherwise I, I, I will cast a vote um, at the end if that's okay with everybody. But um, Christian, if you want to write this down, that's fine. Otherwise, I can communicate this to you later. Your, it's your, your call. Um, we'll see how fast we go. So let's start with, um, I'm just going in order of my screen. Uh, so Tom? Oh, sorry. No, so that, motion. that's a no? Negative. Okay. Um, and, and I should probably restate the motion. This is to admit Waterbury without conditions subject to them applying. That was what Ray's motion was in the chat. Uh, John Morris? Okay, John Morris is a yes. Siobhan? No. Okay, Siobhan is a no. Ray? No. 
Ray is a no. Josh? No. Josh is a no. Uh, Chuck? Yes. Okay. RD? RD Eno? No. Okay. No. All right. Becky? No. No. Katharina? Yes. Okay. Alan? No. Henry? To clarify, we're, we're saying that it's subject to their making a formal application. If that's part of the motion, then I would say yes. Okay. I have Henry as a yes. Ken? No. Okay. And uh, Tim Sullivan? No. And I will vote no as well. Not that I need to go one way or the other. Okay. So the, 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 motion is, the motion is declined. Um, so let me follow up with Waterbury again. We'll get them in here to a next meeting. Maybe we'll have a, a special meeting, just something, something short. Um, and we'll, we'll sort this out in a bit. And I, I will put on the table uh, informally you know, what the kind of various paths might be and how they might share the, the, uh, their federal largesse. Um, Okay, moving right along. Uh, RFP for accounting services. Oops, and the, my TV is about to go into standby, so hold on a second. Hopefully that sorts it out. Okay, that's apparently not, not going to do that. There we go, because it's a touch screen. This is like like a it's like a fifty four inch or like a sixty inch touch screen. It blows my mind. So you play like fr fruit ninja with actual weapons, probably right. Um, okay, uh, RFP for accounting services, right? I think this is yours. Well, it, actually, the prime mover for this is Tom. Tom, do you want to speak to this? Oh no, you can go ahead. He says, "Go ahead." Put your headset on and go ahead and talk. Here, but um, the uh, the whereas is essentially say, you know, um, there are a number of accounting um, capabilities that we don't have in house, but need to be achieved in order for us to go after things like take rates and um, realize or not realize rates. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rates at any rate, um, and and also accounting best practices. Uh, restricting ourselves to using governmental accountability um, standards and uh, so to that effect uh, it seems that now is definitely the time if not earlier for us to get serious about accounting and find someone who can do that work for us so uh, it is hereby moved that the CB Fiber Governing Board request the Finance Committee to draft and the Executive Committee to refine issue and publicize a request for proposals for an accounting contractor whose prime responsibilities will be to properly structure, maintain, and keep the CB Fire books, prepare and aid in the management of our budget, prepare for audits, and aid in the design of our subscription rate structure. Okay, Tom moved. I'll, I'll second, second it. Second. Oh, I, I beat you to it, Chuck. So Tom moved, I seconded it. Um, any further? Discussion about this? Uh, I have a quick question. Is, sure. is this in our, our uh, budget as it stands? Is it in our budget as it stands? Yeah, Jerry? Not really, uh, but it should be a component of any grant that we get, grant administration, and the large aspect of this is grant administration. So there, there should be a percentage of any grant that we get that allows for funds to be used for grant administration. Oh, we, we have. A, you couldn't hear Jerry very well. Oh, they didn't. They didn't hear me. Go ahead and put it on. Okay, so let me tr let me try this again. Uh, okay, good. 
So any 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 grant that we get, typically part there's a percentage of a grant that allows you to use the grant funds for grant administration. So the, the the bulk of the funding for this, if not all of the funding for this, would probably come through that through that percentage of whatever grants we have. Um, there, there, there really isn't much in the budget as, as was put before to, uh, to be able to sustain something like this. It would need grant funding, funding to be sustainable. Thanks, sir. All right, good, and a good question, Josh. Any other, any other questions about this? Yeah, Siobhan? Um, so, is there anything in this motion that would preclude us being able to participate in anything Vicuda might come up with as a centralized possible accounting thing that they've been talking about? Or would this make that difficult for us to kind of sashay in there? Well, I mean, uh, I think we have to get started even if Vicuda doesn't move on it. I mean. And if they have an offering that they go into altogether, this is not us, you know, contracting with anyone yet. This is us, you know, putting out the RFP. I mean, it's really getting getting the ball rolling. I would love, man, would I love to see a statewide, all the CUDs share an accountant and they can do the same sort of books and everybody's books look exactly the same um, because that would be um, really easy then when the CUDs are handing books off and handing audits off, you know, to the state for checking, you know, and double checking. So when their their finance folks are looking at it, they're saying, okay, well, looks the same as the last one. Check, 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 go on to the next, and it's all it's all in the same format. That would be terrific. Um, I think this is us trying to get a little bit of a head of steam in the event that Vicuda or the state choose not to not to go that route. I think that would be silly, but I think that that's my thought about this anyways. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't, I, I didn't think that the wording would lock us out of anything, but I just wanted to make sure that we kind of had that sit there just in case. Is, so am I, am I uh, interpreting that correctly, Ray, Tom, Jerry, everybody that's like, touched this? Does that seem, but, like, like we're, we're not getting locked out of any choices? I don't, I don't see how we're getting locked out. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we should be good. Uh, somebody just had their hand up. Yeah, Phil. Uh, and this really speaks to um, a concern that the, uh, the the public service board has um, with our ability to meet the grant requirements uh, that was spoken to earlier. Um, so I, this is a, something we have to uh, something we have to do. And from what I understand from the motion, it's just get in our RFP at this point, and maybe that could be used by we could to. Uh, um, to get them um, up up to speed faster as well. That's true. All right, any, any other thoughts on the uh, accounting RFP? Okay, uh, any objections to adopting this resolution or adopting this motion as, as moved? Okay. I'm gonna take that as unanimous consent. Thanks everybody. Let's move on then. Um, grant anticipation notes, treasury ruling request. Ray, you wanna take a crack at this? Sure, so you hopefully saw the email that I sent out earlier with regard to this in preparation for this. And uh, the good news is this is OBE, so overtaken by events. I was looking to get um, CB fiber, um, authority in use of CB fiber CUD in filing this treasury uh, request for ruling on what I uh, about grant anticipation notes. But after doing all the preparation work and everything, uh, EC, uh, F, <laughs> FX Flynn on behalf of Vicuda submitted it already. So it's done. And so we don't have to spend any more time on it. And if you really want to know more, read my email all right so so this agenda item is moot that's what i'm hearing from you ray moot moot okay we're mooting on um 
Town ARPA funds. There was a discussion that I've not had a chance to get back to, a question about how to approach towns for uh, ARPA funds and presentations. And um, I was meaning to respond to that and I kind of lost the, lost the thread. I can kind of tell you, um, I haven't heard, um, I heard unofficially from um, Middlesex, I think, but we're going to be, um, I need to work with their attorney to see what, because uh, apparently he has some concerns with the language as presented, which any, any good attorney is going to take a crack at it and throw some red lines in there and change some things. So um, I don't see that as being a, a big concern. Um, and there were some of you that wanted to approach your, your towns and talk about this too. And, and Becky, I think maybe that was you that sent that first email. And if you could maybe just, for, for my own um, foggy brain, um, if you want to tell me like where you're at or what you're hoping to do and how we can support that. I don't know if I sent the first one, but um, our select board asked if I could do some sort of presentation to them, just letting them know sort of where we are, what we're doing, what the plans are, because um, they definitely want to look into, you know, how do they want to allocate the ARPA funds. So I thought with the PowerPoint presentation that you know, has been circulated, you know, if that's approved and, you know, allowed to go public, that that might be a good starting point, perhaps, um, to get them some more information. But I want to coordinate with, with some of you that have a longer tenure um, than I do. Sure. And, and I've, I've presented to Woodbury in the past when they initially wanted to join. Um, and if, if you think the pres that presentation will be sufficient, and um, that's that's great. I think we can probably use that as a starting point. I'm happy to, to participate in that as, uh, as necessary. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Ray. Sure. So um, uh, as part of pulling together the presentation, as we're, I'm referring to it, we have been working we worked with rd for example because he was doing a presentation to cabot and um, modeling after what chuck had done and a little bit of what uh, david had done we have pulled together something that's contextual in other words for the particular town and we're happy to pull together something for woodbury or for any other town uh, and basically that that talks more specifically about uh, uh, woodbury now we we haven't been you know haven't been uh, revealing our plans to the kind of detail folks would like in terms of when uh, in terms of exactly when uh, but we can give years and and uh, frankly uh, we're going to do an awful lot in 21 and 22 and I think people will be happy with what our plans are um, all of us contingent upon you know A B and C right. So um, we're happy to do that. I think it's about 10, 12 slides or something. And uh, uh, so anybody has any requests, uh, we're happy Chuck and I and, and John uh, Walters were working on those. Okay, any, anybody else looking to reach out to towns looking for some, looking for some support or looking for custom, um, you know, custom, customizing the presentation, anything like that, happy to do, do that, Tom? Um, just similar, you know, looking to um, you know, reach out to the town, provide a presentation. I haven't spoken to them other than just kind of an introductory, hey, we're thinking about this. Um, and that was several months ago. So uh, it would be good to follow up. And okay. Yeah. So I would say if you want to, if you want to take, take the reins and schedule a time, and I, that would probably be a, uh, Becky, if you wanted to do that too, <laughs> schedule a time with the select board. Sometimes trying to get them early is probably better, a better bet. And that way, everybody can schedule around that in advance. Yeah, right? Yeah, so I, I think what I'll do is um, uh, I think I'll send out to the board uh, the presentation we did for Fair uh, for Cabot and for RD. And you have an, you know, an idea of what, what, what's in there. And then if you want some customization for your town, then we're happy to work with you. Cool. All right, uh, Siobhan, sorry, you're, you're hiding oh, in the upper corner. I'm over here. Um, the, uh, 
I've already done a small presentation tailored for Orange uh, that I cobbled together from other information that we had floating around. And what I need now is a formal document requesting an amount of money. Um, they're ready for that. They're, they just need to know, and they, but they need some kind of formal piece of paper that they can talk about and discuss and move forward with. That's where we're at. Okay, well, we have the MOU that we approved previously, and that so is can I go ahead, so should I go ahead and propose that to them? Uh, that, that was what we that's what we had previously uh, agreed to here as a starting point. You know, any final contract is going to need to come back to the board for approval. But yeah, send it send it over to them and say that this is this is our starting point. Okay, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Sure. Hey, David. David Wentz. Hi. Um, so I sort of have a question just about what the requirements are for the ARPA funding related to being able to, whether or not we are going to need to be able to track the use of the fund for town specific benefit or beneficiaries. Um, I was reading the legislation and the treasury guidance and it, it, it's not very clear on that or I wasn't able to find any clarity, but it seems to say that money is meant to be spent for the benefits of the, the whatever the local government um, area, whether it's county or, or town. And so I'm just wondering if that's something that we have answers for. I know our treasurer in Duxbury had kind of questions about that. Um, and uh, I mean, related to that, I guess, whether, um, yeah, whether we'd be able to, like if that kind of tracking is required, if we're ready to do that kind of tracking and also what that means in terms of timelines of spending and, and not mixing pots of money. And so not mixing grant funding that we have for the other kind of high level design work and stuff that's already planned because there is stuff that's very clear in the, the treasury guidance that it can't be, um, uh, it needs to be additional. There needs to be kind of additionality of funding. It can't be replacing stuff that's already been budgeted. So I just wanna know if we know kind of have answers to that or if that's something we need to get kind of more clarity on yeah so I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not a lawyer you not ho hopefully you never thought that I was um, my, my read of this and the rules that I'd seen allow towns to del essentially delegate the funds for this purpose and we and part of our projects part of the grants that we're doing for the state already require us to describe at a very concrete detailed level what we're doing in each town um, and we already know right now that we do not have enough funding right now today, uh, even with the H, um, yeah, even with some of the H360 funding, we're not gonna have the entire amount of money necessary to do all the things that we're hoping to do. So there will always be room for the ARPA funds. And uh, yeah, and so we, yeah, we will need to, um, we, we will still need to be reporting back to the state because the state is passing these through to the town and the town would then be passing these through to us and it would be our responsibility and it's actually in the our, um, in the MOU that we would take upon ourselves the responsibility for managing that documentation. All right, so I, I see, um, so um, John had his hand up and then I see Josh in the chat and then Chuck. John Morris, if you want to unmute. Sorry about that, slow mouse. Uh, so I think Marshfield's kind of at the other end of the spectrum on this. They're pretty much planning to, to wait quite a bit of time, uh, possibly discussing this at town meeting. And um, so I, I'm not feeling like I wanna push, uh, push them to, to act on this unless cb fiber needs imminent action uh, but i was also interested in uh just having an idea of the order of magnitude of of what's what's considered reasonable for for a town to contribute well that's that's a good question i mean some some towns are contemplating sending the entirety of the arpa funds that they're getting to this project um I think in part so that they don't have to do the accounting, but in part because they believe in what we're what we're trying to do. Um, there's other towns that are looking at how can we how can we essentially cover the cost of 
this portion of the project for the town. So like, can I cover the, just the poll audit for this town? Um, it, it, it depends on their appetite. It depends on what they're, um, what they're hoping to do. Um, in, in this case, we don't, we don't get across the finish line, the, the long strategic finish line, even with all of the, the, the grant money that we are seeing, which is a lot. Um, we are not getting all the way across the finish line regardless. So this is one of those cases of every little bit helps. Anything that towns um, share with this grant money has the effect of driving down the, the monthly rate for literally everyone in the district because that's money then we don't have to be paying interest on. And I, I forget the figures, it was something like 43% of the, is that right, Ray? 43% of the monthly fee, monthly charges that EC Fiber charges to their folks are just debt service. So if we make debt service go away substantially, we're talking about you know, easily sub $50 rates. All right, so I've got, uh, Josh and then Chuck. And yeah. <clears throat> so I had actually done a presentation to the the select board of Barry Town uh, back in May, I believe it was, um, and it, it expressed um, you know our our desire for them to delegate some of the ARPA funds to this project, um, and then also gave them the they wanted to know you know what what we were essentially asking for. And I gave them the larger of, of, of the numbers, but also told them that, you know, we'd be happy with whatever the town would be willing to give towards this project. Um, they almost seemed a bit put back by that, or at least I should say the chair of the select board did, stating that in an earlier meeting, he said that he had with you, Jeremy, you said that we would never be asking for money. So for him, he was very like, uh, why are you asking for money? And so it was, it was a, almost a, it was a weird computational moment <laughs> within my presentation, but uh, that's kind of how it went. And I'm, I'm kind of hearing now that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not really planning on uh, putting a lot of funds here. And they also believe that the, the majority of the town of Barry um, is for the majority well served. Yeah, that's that's true. Then there there are some addresses that aren't, but um, yeah. So so to to be clear, um, you know, you, the Barrytown Select Board is really really conservative. Um, I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. And second of all, when I talked to your Select Board and when I talked to your Select Board Chair, I that was not the language that I used. I said I'm never going to we're never going to come and ask for property tax dollars because it is against the law for us to do so. If they're getting a a, a grant of you know this free federal money slush fund whatever you know and they are looking for ways to spend it then yeah we're, we're going to come ask for it but on the other hand Barrytown probably has other infrastructure that they might use um, these funds on and we I would not um, I would certainly not argue with them to do that I mean we're not really going to Montpelier that because I know they have a lot of deferred maintenance on sewer and water projects that I, I think they're intending to use these funds for um, so, I, I, I th thanks for going and, and reaching out to them about that, Josh. Um, if we don't end up getting funds from them, we're we're going to plow forward. It's just that if the towns decide to join join with us hand in hand, and and part, you know provide some money, it like I said before, it, it literally drives everyone's rates down. So I mean that's that's the the, the biggest argument that that I can make to anyone going back to. Um, to talk to select boards or city councils about this. All right, so I've got a Chuck, then Ken, then John. Uh, my, my point is um, specifically about a comment David uh, W. Ment made, um, and Ray sort of made a comment to the same effect in chat just now. Uh, but I believe we should not allow ourselves to get into the business where any of this money comes with strings for how we use it for a specific community. Um, I strongly believe we need to hold a, a firm line 
as Jeremy just so gracefully worded it, that you know any contribution helps us drive down rates across the entire district, helps us achieve the vision of building this network across the entire district and 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 um, getting service to those underserved, um, but that we need to uh, you know not make any obligations on ourselves to do specific things for specific towns and that's even inclusive of reporting um, except in as much as we would be reporting about our build out in various towns anyway okay thanks for that chuck uh, ken john and then david went again yeah i guess i'm going to go the other way on this um because it's hard for me to imagine um, a municipality contributing significant amounts of dollars um, without there being some specific benefit to their residents. Um, that you know, most I mean, Montpelier Wright's not going to contribute. Um, I'll tell you right now, but but other towns they're going to have residents that have projects that they want funded. So I was curious whether it's possible that something like connection fees, the hardware that may be necessary for um, in-home installation, whether that can be a basis for the, these dollars. Because as I said, man, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you've gotten some feedback that with the message that your contribution is going to lower rates for everybody, and that's satisfying to a select board. If that's the case, then fine. I just have a hard time imagining um, a select board when they see their menu of of opportunities that they'll say oh sure we'll do that okay. thanks Ken uh, John and then David uh, so my second question is about uh, the any restrictions on on how these funds are used I hear you talking about how uh, Barry Town might have to have a lot of other infrastructure uh, uses for this money. Is a small town like Marshfield likely to not be able to figure out how to use this money? Is it so restricted, or are are all of the other people who who might come to the town also going to be able to come up with projects that could be funded by these funds? Yeah. So the, the, there are a handful of specific um, specific kinds of projects that these can fund. So. Uh, water, wastewater, uh, broadband being among them. I think there's a, there's a couple others. COVID relief related, um, you know, rental, rental assistance so folks don't get evicted, um, things like that. There, so there's, yeah, there are, other, there are other options out there. And the, all of the towns have received, you know, uh, advice from the League of Cities and Towns with a kind of a breakdown of what this looks like. And the, the league's advice was slow down and like, like, and Marshfield is taking that advice. Other towns are saying, let's, let's get this rolling. Um, so I don't know that that answers your question well, but, um, there is, if you go to vlct.org, there is a, uh, like a frequently asked question for the ARPA funds for towns. And that gives a, a rather short, um, not lawyer explanation of how the funds can be used so that might be a place to start um, so you get a sense of like what sorts of projects could we also see like low income renters i mean that's I, that seems like a really good way of spending this these funds too and i would certainly you know even though we're about to do some you know incredible work i would certainly not want to stand in the way of funding projects like that that would that would feel that would feel kind of gross to me honestly uh, David, you are up next. Sure, thanks. I have um, two points. Um, the first is I, I agree with Chuck what you're saying in, in principle, and and Jeremy what you were saying. That's um, definitely should like would be great, but um, but it may there may be rules and regulations that we that we could run afoul of, and that could affect our ability to get other federal funding. Um, and so I think we need to just be very careful and make sure we do get a lawyer. Um, and a legal kind of opinion about if, because I, I mean, I deal with a lot of federal grants, very large ones, and when something is earmarked for a program area or for a particular like funding stream, we create separate budgets, separate budget codes for those um, 
for those activities and we need to track those and report them very carefully that, that they've been used for the intended purpose whatever that earmark is and so if if this funding if the arpa funding if they see a town money that goes to the town as an earmark that it's supposed to be used to benefit that town we definitely need to know if if we need to be able to track it have our separate budget code um, and so between our kind of treasurer and our lawyers, I think we just need to get very kind of clear guidance on that before we accept money from towns. Because if, if we do need to track it, we just need to be very careful we don't run afoul of any of those, those rules and that they're very clear. Um, and then the second point is about just on approaching towns. I do think there's, and we've already gotten these in Duxbury as they've discussed it at the select board, these questions have come up just about kind of the expectations and and hopefully like there is this runway to be able to take it slow because I think releasing the plan and some sort of like clarity about four different towns I wouldn't want us to be in a position where a town gives us money and then finds out afterward that they're not going to be served for two years or something and and then uh and then it create a big negative um kind of bad blood or bad publicity for CV fiber. So I don't know how to kind of balance that in terms of the timing, but I do think it would be good for us to be able to be kind of open and upfront with towns about the timing, um, when things will happen, what this funding would be used for, or what, what we're currently funding if we don't need to kind of earmark it specifically, but what's currently happening um, and what their expectations should be. Um, because I do think there's a danger, like if Duxbury all of a sudden, I would actually tell them, okay, don't decide yet. Because if they voted for it now and then found out later um, that the timing might be delayed or not what they were expecting when they voted on it, I would be worried um, that that then there'd be a backlash against CV fiber. So for any town that depending on the timing. Sure. And so so Mr. Finance Chair Ray, would you? Um, I, I I think maybe maybe during the executive committee meeting or finance committee meeting, I think we should authorize reaching out to Krista again and getting maybe getting some of uh, David Wentz questions answered. So, you know, in terms of what the formalities are, when a town, you know, hands us a check that they've just been handed through this, this funding mechanism, what are our roles and responsibilities in terms of commingling those funds in a larger project? Do we indeed, you know, if these are, you know, earmarked in that traditional sense for a specific location, do we need to then account for each town differently? So maybe we could, I'll put that on the, um, um, I got it. You don't need to put that. Okay. Yeah. So okay. We'll yeah. That. So we'll do that. I'm not familiar with the, with the, uh, topic. Okay. Yeah. So let's, yeah. So let's, let's, see, let's, if let's, see, if let's see if we can get that answered definitively. Answer definitively. Does, that mean, Does that mean I think it's okay? Cause all of the other districts, I mean, all the other districts are doing it too. Well, jumping off cliffs and such. Um, and the folks at the department, uh, the public service department, all, all also think that this is a, a, a rational and straightforward thing to do. But, but David, I think you're right. Let's, let's be cautious and engage a lawyer and make sure that we are, that we're stepping along the, along the path that we're going to be able to justify um, when we have to produce documentation at the end of each year. Um, okay. Any other, uh, do I have anybody else? I don't have anybody else on the list. Anything else about town ARPA funds that we should be talking about? Okay, let's continue on. Uh, update on grants. Um, Jerry gave a pretty decent update on what, we, um, what we're looking at for the H315 documentation, the upcoming H360 documentation. Um, I remain in a sort of, uh, I don't know, power struggle, death grip with the federal SAM system, system for what, awards management. Um, getting that to, to accept our address change and CV fiber versus Central Vermont Internet or whatever. Um, I, I'm going to have to go and make a call to the federal bureaucracy and use a federal help desk number. I have no idea what that's going to look like. I ex I'm expecting it to be really bad, and I'm doing that tomorrow. So. Um, there's some that the next steps for some of the next steps for the state grants being dispersed to us are being held up by that process. So, um, trying to think if there's anything else, any other updates on grants 
any folks have questions about or want to add? Okay. Cool, moving along. The going public presentation. So the, I, so the, the basic decision here is like, do we take this presentation that um, you know, Ray has spearheaded and put together with a lot of feedback and do we start advertising this? Um, do we, and I'm not sure we need to go into executive session. My opinion is that the material that's in there is informative enough um, without, um, without revealing anything that's too terribly sensitive. That's my own, my own thought. Um, Ray, you want to make the motion just so we can have it and move forward if we need to? Sure. Uh, move that the information contained in the presentation, less inclusion of Waterbury and respective data, <laughs> dated 12 July uh, 2021, is declassified and may be used in such a manner in such settings as the executive committee may determine. Second. Okay, moved by Ray, seconded by Siobhan. Chuck? Two comments. Um, comment one, uh, a little more strategic, um, just to provide a little more context on the purpose here. Uh, the reason we're going down this path is we have historically deemed, and, and this is more for the benefit of those newer amongst, amongst us, uh, we have deemed the order in which we build to be uh, a, a something that if it were to go public would be a detrimental to our ability to actually achieve our goals. Um, and so this does start to contain the first tidbits of what order we would uh, build in with the exception of some grant specific projects we have done to date. But this goes a little, a little more broadly in terms of that. So, uh, you know, we are a public body and our information should be public by default. And so where Ray uses the term declassified, um, you know, I wanna make sure that it's it's in that context of it's, it's information we have previously as a body found to be confidential and we are now deciding that some subset of it we are ready to allow to be public because um, we are far enough along that it no longer represents a, a, a detriment to our ability to achieve our goals. Um, the second thing, a little more tactically, um, I think uh, we should amend the motion to ensure that uh, the executive committee and or the communications committee may determine. So I'll, Ray, accept, Siobhan, it friendly, I'll accept it as a friendly amendment. Good for you, Siobhan. Okay. Okay, so friendly amended to be uh, so executive committee and the comms committee. Any other? Yeah, Tom. So I'm not sure how to have an open discussion about uh, how <laughs> whether or not to go public with things when we haven't yet gotten public with the things I want to discuss. So um, yeah, so so this. This is where we may have the executive the executive session to discuss things that are that are trade secrets. Because if we if we need to be talking about these things so that we can make this this discussion, this decision. Okay, I just lost my uh, just lost my, my big screen. So I guess I'm of the opinion that we should do that. <laughs> we should first have the discussion about what to go public with before we um, decide to go public with it. Did Did y'all hear that? I guess I guess I'd ask the question. I'd ask the question, Tom. Are you objecting to anything in the presentation now and, and making it public? Um. I guess if it came to a vote, I would vote for it to go public as it is right now. Um, there are aspects of it that I think it is good for us as a board to discuss so that we're all doing that with eyes wide open um, and knowing what it is that we're voting about. So what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is right. was that well, um, uh, don't object to what's in it, but you think we ought to have it areas B, C, and D, for example, and so that we understand um, that, um, that it doesn't necessarily hold us up on voting for this, 
but it it does um, uh, we should have that discussion and i think that uh, that discussion perhaps ought to start in the pdc and work its way to the board so we can really air that thing out um but you know i'm open to whatever the board wants to do my view of the world is that i'd like to get this done this motion done so we can move on uh, but i'm open to whatever we, anybody wants to do okay alan so when i look through this it seems to me there are only two slides that we really need to focus on in terms of uh, a big decision about whether we're, we're we're releasing some trade secret that we might not want to and those two slides are numbers 13 and 14. And Ray, I, I think they're the ones that you've sort of uh, referenced in your, in your last comment here, uh, the different areas. I think everything else in here is either so detailed that it's not going to matter that so much information is being given out because it's just a picture of how huge a job we have in front of us. I think the one place where there is the detail that might have strategic value for somebody competing against us are these two slides, 13 and 14. Um, and maybe that's where a bigger discussion should be had uh, on a committee level and then brought back again before the board at another time. Uh, but I, I think everything is fine really and doesn't need to be discussed except 13 and 14. Chuck? At 15. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I look at 15 like I look at so many of these other charts. For most people, this is not going to mean very much. I, I, it just doesn't seem all that strategic to me. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'm not being cynical enough on this one, but I, I just, um, that seems so general, number 15. Maybe the numbers I'm looking at or different page numbers are different from yours. There, are, I see three charts that have area A, area B, and area C on them. And I see in the index on the left side of the PowerPoint screen, I see number, um, yeah, I'm sorry, number, well, I see number 12, I see number 13, and then 14 looks, some fine to me it's it's just really those two 12 and 13. so what we're talking about just to be clear is the first of all is the identification of the towns that are in area a and the um uh the lack of identifying who the towns are for areas b and c although we mentioned uh b has seven towns and and, and c has five towns and then we get into the chart which talks about which which reveals, for example, that our, it's our anticipation that areas A and B will be competing for the underserved in 2022, and that area C will be completed for the underserved in 2023. And that's a huge amount of information. Um, we have you know 20 cities and towns, and we're what we're saying there is that five, seven, and twelve has 17 of them are going to be completed for the underserved by the end of 2023. And so that's not, not, that's not nothing. Um, I think it's meaningful. And it's meaningful if you're going after ARPA funds, it's meaningful for others who are thinking about this. Um, it doesn't mention Area D, which are the other towns yet, right? Um, uh, I'll, I'll defer now to Chuck. Yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Thanks, Ray. Um, so, the first comment I was going to make is absolutely slide 12 that has the map of area A. Um, that is definitely information we have deemed as a body to be confidential as it would be detrimental to our ability to accomplish our goals. Um, I also see that I actually disagree with you, Alan. I don't think 13 has much that is even uh, it's, it's the slide uh, entitled construction priorities and talks gives some general statistics about area B and C. I don't even think that even has enough information to be um, uh, something we need to hold close personally. Uh, it's obviously up to the body to to determine that. Um, but, but my take on that would be that. So it really for me, it's slide 12, 
in conjunction with slides 15 through 17, and it's the fact that they work hand in hand with each other, you know, the, the, the map as well as the actual build schedule that now references that map um, being the critical facet of that. Uh, and then I would also argue that slides um, 9 and 10 were pieces of information we also deemed uh, and I believe redacted from um, pieces of information we submitted to the state uh, and to public records requests. And so, you know, I believe those are ones we technically did also deem um, the costs associated by community. Uh, I believe we did deem those as uh, things we had not allowed to go public in the past as well. Um, my memory could be inaccurate on that, but that, you know, that's my vague, rec uh, vague recollection. So um, I, I see those as the big drivers as well. Uh, otherwise, Alan, I, I totally agree with you. I, I, I don't think other than what I've just described that there's anything else here that we can make a concrete argument that we have kept private in the past. Yeah, if I could just follow up on that, Chuck, I agree with you. I only included the B and C, the slide that had B and C, because it's such a contrast to A. And it seemed to me that that was sort of all of one package. But I think it is, I think it is the uh, the slide A uh, slide that's the one that's the uh, the most the most challenging, as it were. All right. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Jerry. Tom, can you light me up? Thanks. Thanks. So I, I just want to put this in perspective. It could be as soon as three weeks, two weeks, three weeks. We're going to have trucks out in area A with a placard on the side that says CV fiber. So it's not going to be a secret anymore. So between now and then, there'll probably a, be a press release. Um, area A is not a going to be a closely held secret in the extremely near future. We're talking days. So I don't know that we're uh, harming ourselves in any way uh, by agreeing now to allow this to be something that we can use publicly. Next time. All right, Alan? Yeah, and I, I've always assumed, um, Jerry, that what you said was going to be the trigger for when the information would be released and that we wouldn't even have to have a discussion about it. That when we started actually going door to door, we're doing poll inventories, have trucks out there with a placard on it saying CV fiber. I've just assumed that when that happens, there's no reason to talk about whether we are should be withholding the information because at that point, it, it really is, to my mind, it's moot. At that point, the information has to be released because we're providing it by the presence of vehicles or people uh, going into certain areas. So I, I think you might be right. And that's what I've always assumed would, would sort of force the issue. And we really, we, we wouldn't need to have a meeting to decide it because it would have been decided by the actions we had taken. So let me Alan, just ask the question, are you opposed to revealing the area A? I am now until there are people out doing the work that makes it obvious that that's where the build out is. I guess so. So, the, so, so, I, so I, I, I want to do a quick. Let me do a quick straw poll because I, I want to get a sense of the sense of the room. How many folks? So, so I'm hearing from Alan that we should maybe um, slow down on revealing area A. So just on the issue of revealing what area A is, <clears throat> if you just show hands or pipe up or what what have you. If you are against revealing what those what those er, that area A is, just Show me your hands or let me know. I would be happy to hear or see. You mean at the current moment, Jerry, is that right? Right. Jeremy, you mean at the current moment? At the current moment today, yes. Yep. Okay. One, two. Okay. Okay, so. Not, not a motion, but in terms of the, the, the prevailing winds, um, if there is a, <clears throat> I, I think it's time. Um, I'm not sure that it's necessarily going to be going to be three weeks, but it will be imminent. I also think there is probably a little bit of wisdom in in giving the towns a little bit of a running start, and also giving 
the comms committee a chance to be out there and be talking about the things that are happening Im happening imminently before the trucks roll. Um, that's my and that's my own thought. So, any other thoughts, one way or the other? We have a motion on the table, friendly amended. This is uh, Henry. Um, I just think we should approve the motion and and trust that the executive and the comms committee will make the this, the right decisions as to when to release the information. I mean, all we're doing is saying this is the information we want them to re to release, and it's up to them when they release it and how they release it. And I trust them, so let's just get the motion and pass it. Yeah, that's that. That's actually that's a good point, Henry. Yeah, the, the wording of the motion doesn't actually release it as of today. It allows the executive committee or the communications committee to, to sort out how they're going to use that. Any other thoughts? Okay, are you ready to uh, should we do a should we do a roll call if folks want to want to vote for or against this? I guess that's more of a question for the folks that had their hands up. Um, are there any objections to adopting the motion as presented? Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Then, so we will the executive committee and the. Uh, comms committee will then use this information as we go to our ramp up to having the trucks roll and are actually out there doing some work. Thanks for that, everybody. Um, all right, so nothing else on. We just, we just confirmed that Alan isn't frozen. Oh, okay, I just finally saw him move. I just want to make sure his concerns were, yeah. were addressed. And he was going to vote against it, but Worcester's internet preempted him. I voted yeah, I, earlier, so yeah. You know. I I heard about a third of the of the last few minutes, so I looked at the motion, and I think as long as the judgment of the executive committee and the comms committee is thrown into the mix, that's what's important for me, frankly. I I, I think that's fine. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our regularly scheduled stuff let's do let's do round table let's start with uh tom all set tom is set uh john morris we're, we're, we're gonna be another couple minutes wrapping up john's good siobhan cool ray <coughs> we have an executive committee on monday and the pdc on tuesday comms committee on thursday so we have agendas that we need to get together work is accelerating uh, on a lot of different fronts and uh, hang in there and uh, on, on that note yeah while i'm thinking about it if you have uh any other agenda items for the executive committee meeting on monday please uh please get that to me asap uh josh all set thank you thanks josh phil feels good thank you chuck I would just like to say a very uh, heartfelt thank you to Ray and John Walters for taking that presentation to the finish line. Uh, I got sort of inundated with work in the last week and a half and had uh, very little time to contribute and, and they did the lion's share of that work. So thank you both very, very much. I think it came out great. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, starting to engage our communities with this content a bit more. Right, thanks, Chuck. RD. Thanks to Chuck, Ray, and John for putting the uh, the PowerPoint presentation together. It was very helpful to me. Um, thanks to Chuck for designing the um, uh, the I recall magnet. And I just want to note for the record whether we uh, uh, approve the minutes of June eighth, tenth, and July sixth this evening. But um, with respect to the minutes of July sixth, I would need to abstain because I wasn't present. And I don't recall that there was a vote taken and I was able to register that abstention. 
thanks for that, RD. That was just a that was a unanimous consent. So there may have been folks abstaining from those, but it, it, it passed regardless. Uh, let's see, uh, John. Anything you would like to add, John Walters? Oh, okay. Becky? I'm all good. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Katarina? I'm all set. Thanks. Thanks, Katarina. Alan? The audio tonight was really problematic. And I, I think even from the mothership, Jeremy, things were things were not coming through consistently and clearly for me. So um, I'll see if there were problems on my end of the line. But I think other people were having problems as well. Okay, we'll see if we can figure out some other something else for for next time if we need to. That was that was going to be my question at the end, but all right. So yeah, there's a there's there's plenty of of open seats here at the school, by the way. The saying and the uh, and I was I was telling Jerry that that the the bandwidth between he and I is is much better than than usual in person. All right, uh, let's see, uh, Henry. I'm, uh, uh, great work, everybody, and it's great to see things moving along. I just have one question. How, what's the schedule like for the three CUD high-level design? Or when do we expect to see some uh, uh, early deliverables from that? Yeah, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, so what I can tell you is that the uh, contracts are under negotiation for the high level design. Um, and uh, my expectation is that we're not going to see anything until uh, beginning sometime in August and probably to the, the last half of August and not the front half. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. Thanks for all your work. Go ahead, Tim. Am I up? You're up. <clears throat> it, it cut out for a second on your side, I think. Um, I think anybody that was having um, uh, audio problems mentioned also they, their video looked very pixelated. So I presume it's just their individual lines having problems because I could hear everything except for when people having video problems spoke, they, they were also having audio problems. So I would just suggest that maybe when uh, people have to talk that have a, a poor line quality, they just shut off the video that will give the audio a lot more bandwidth temporarily. And the only other thing I just wanted to uh, tell you, J Jeremy, um, if uh, you're doing these uh, uh, in person now, um, I think I submitted to you choices for cameras. I didn't know if you got a chance to look it all over. And if you want to uh, one by one, uh, one on one, just reach out to me, uh, discuss things for uh, the in person solutions. Uh, we can discuss that another day. That is a that's a really good idea. And I'm going to put that on as a quick discussion item for the executive committee, just so we can see if we want to if we want to invest in that so that that might be that might be something that we could that we could make good use of so thank thank you for that reminder tim i appreciate it okay that's all for me thanks all right uh david went uh all set thanks everyone for all the hard work all right. thanks david and so yeah I, and thanks again to everybody that's um doing anything at all um a lot of a lot of heavy lifting going on here the old uh Cliche, many hands, light work and such, and we will hopefully sort out these hybrid meetings before long. But uh, I will, I mean, maybe I can incentivize folks, you know, if you're going to, if you come to the next meeting that we have at Berlin Elementary, um, I'll buy the first round across the street. So how about that? What's across the street? Applebee's. That, that like a plan. <laughs> So, hey, it's hey, it's it, it's Berlin. We're almost at the town center, Jerry. That's this is this right is what we have. Us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I've got. Um, I will declare us adjourned at seven forty-eight p.m. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. <laughs>